In this week's brand new episode of Hill Climb Monsters in Project Cars 2, I'm testing out a winning formula as the Formula Renault 3.5 takes on a grueling Azure Coast Hill Climb course. But with over 500 brake horsepower at its disposal, can this junior single seater knock off some of its more senior competition? Let's go find out. What's going on guys, my name is Matinio and welcome back to Project Cars 2 and a brand new episode of Hill Clan Monsters. And this week's challenge, as you can see on screen, is this, the 2015 Formula Renault 3.5. And the reason I went for this car this week is purely because we haven't done a whole lot of single seaters. We've done the Lotus 98T, we've done the Dallara Indy car, uh, and we did the Lotus Type 49C. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of, you know, full-blown single seaters that we can do. I don't want to do the Formula X car yet. I'm saving that for the very last episode. So we're going to go for the next best thing, which I think is this, the Formula Renault 3.5. So, yeah, um, let's kick the episode up as, uh, off as we always do by taking a look at some of its stats. So, uh, produced in 2015, it has a, uh, as you would imagine, 3.5 litre V8 engine with a 6-speed sequential gearbox bolted to it. It's rear-wheel drive, of course. Uh, the power output is 530 brake horsepower, and that's good enough to move this thing from 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds and all the way up to 187 miles an hour, providing you have a stretch of road long enough. Um, the weight is, as you would imagine, from a single seat, very light, 1,373 pounds. It doesn't have any traction stability or, or, uh, or ABS or any of that nonsense, but it does have DRS, so that's going to come in handy. Uh, control difficulty is 2, and cornering speed is 3 there. So, yeah, um, the Formula Renault 3.5, the... Fairly impressive stats. The series itself was pretty good. It had some very notable drivers. Uh, Robert Kubica won it uh, back in the, I think it was about 2005, was it maybe, uh, potentially. Um, Ollie Rowland, Robert Wickens, um, he won it as well. Uh, Stoffel Van Dorn competed in it at one point. Um, so yeah, it's had a lot of notable drivers and uh, it was Formula Renault up until 2015 and then it spent two seasons, I think, as Formula V8 and then it sort of disbanded. And from what I've read, they're hoping to bring it back, and it would be good to have thing, you know, have it back there because these things are sort of like the closest thing we have, or we had, to what would have been the older, um, the sorry, like the mid two thousands Formula One cars, you know, V eight engine, um, aerodynamics still, you know, sort of lean towards that in terms of its body shape and and how it's set up. So, yeah, uh, really cool car to have in the game, and um, yeah, so. Moving on to uh, the uh, the practice and the uh, and the setup. Um, setup wise, I've I did a few months ago run in a Formula Renault 3.5 series with a few people from one of the Facebook groups I'm in, and unfortunately it didn't run its course and get to the end because people are really unreliable and so on. But um, yeah, it was a fun series, so I had a lot of setups there. Um, the uh, the only tweaks I sort of had to make purely because of the nature of the Azure Coast is I have to soften things up a little bit. Um, I did go, I had to go quite high on the wings with, with regards to downfall, so it's 15 at the front and 15 at the rear. But everything else was pretty much just bang on where I wanted it to be really so I didn't have to mess around with the diff or anything like that um the tire pressures I think I just I lowered them a tad at the front I think it was um but other than that and even the brakes and everything so I sort of had a really good starting point for the setup of this car so um it wasn't really uh, a massive job to get this thing sort of in the window where I know I could you know really push it and it wasn't going to bite me um so yeah, uh, but as you would imagine, as always with me, there were a few accidents. Now, unsurprised, surprisingly, there weren't any accidents at the Magic Roundabout. It was very good down there. The main accidents came down at the first corner, and you're going to see this one here. So we just, I just got on the kerb on the inside, on the right side, as we we're coming through the, the first corner towards the apex, and it just, yeah, it kicked me out of uh, out of where I wanted to be, and. Yeah, the wheel just decides, no, I'm sorry, Jim, I'm going to keep on going. I don't need you to finish this run. And that was pretty much that. And had a couple more incidents at the, uh, sorry, a couple more incidents at the, the first corner, mainly due to stupidity because I turn the DRS on and I get to the first corner. And because you don't have to brake, you can just lift off the accelerator and just well, lift partially off the accelerator and just guide it through towards the apex. The DRS stayed absolutely wide open. So... Yeah, as you would imagine, zero downforce at the rear or very limited downforce at the rear. So it would just pitch around and big accidents and wheels go flying all over the place and killing spectators and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Um, but in terms of, uh, like I said, the, the, 
the, the runs and everything, there wasn't many, very many accidents. Um, most of it just came down to just pushing it a bit too hard. So, yeah, this is a very, very stable car. Very good under braking. Very good getting out of those slower corners as well. So, um, this should be, hopefully, a good time. But um, speaking of time and what we should be aiming for, so if we look at the uh, the leaderboards at the moment, so um, the fastest single seater we currently have on our Hill Climb Monsters leaderboard is the 2016 Dallara IL12 with that 554.199. Uh, we've got the Lotus 98T down there in fourth place with that 611.818. But uh, yeah, I think it should be aiming for somewhere in between that and maybe pushing the Dallara purely because it's a more modern car than the, the Lotus is. Um, if we look on the full-blown leaderboards, however, and as you can see, um, we've sort of been kicked off the first page. Our, uh, our Dallara IndyCar time has been booted off there. Um, there is a Dallara IndyCar time. Chris Jones, the bane of my fucking existence. <laughs> he went a full 10 seconds faster than my time. Near as makes no difference. Uh, in I think I think I did it. I can't remember if I did it in the I think I did it in the Chevrolet and not the Honda. I did it in the Chevrolet, and not the Honda. So I don't know if there's a massive difference between the two, but I'm just I'm going to just I'm going to make the excuse now. There's a huge difference between the two. That's why it's 10 seconds faster than me. So there we go. Um, so we've been bumped down to the second page there. Um, so with that uh, that 554. So we're in 12th place at the moment. But to find the fastest Formula Renault time, you have to go down to page number three and position number 27. A 627.1. 7-1 it was there so yeah I did have to lean in because I haven't got my glasses on I should probably have them on so yeah um, I, I'm fairly confident we can beat that I'm fairly confident we beat that whether we can beat the actual Dallara time and our best single seater time on the boards I'm not sure but um, there's only one way to find out I guess and uh, that is by heading down to the track so that's what we're going to do right now and um, we're going to see how the Formula Renault 3.5 uh, got on on its best run here we go then guys, Formula Renault 3.5 on our Azure Coast Hill Climb course and as we head down to the first corner we've got that DRS wide open, we have to manually shut it and uh, we get a little bit of a hit there, we squeeze the apex a little bit too hard, those curves are quite high but it's not a major drama and on we go through the centre S's and down towards cruise liner corner. Uh, we get it down to third gear there, probably could have dropped it down to second, feel like it would have bogged down a little bit but we get down to second, maybe run a little bit wide, don't quite get the apex at trash can corner. But again, not a major drama, and off we go down the hill, DRS wide open towards the Magic Roundabout. And as you can see here, it's just going to take an edit stride, 120 miles an hour, nearest makes no difference as we come through there. And we're back on the DRS, up towards Stickman Squats now. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was expecting there would be certain areas where this thing would be a little bit squirmy. I mean, there we have, did have a little bit of a moment, purely because the, uh, the inside, the left side wheels got off the ground. So we were, did, you know, we we're only having to rely on the traction on the right side only, but... I mean, it's just, it's absolutely on rails. It really is. So I don't know whether it's down to the setup or or just the characteristics of the car. It's absolutely superb. And we're going to get all the way up to about 178 miles an hour as we head down towards uh, Traffic Cone Corner. We're going to get through here. We're going to keep the DRS wide open. Just keep the foot planted. It's just so, so good through there. You don't want to be too drastic on the wheel through there because with the DRS open, you're going to have very little rear downforce so you can easily lose it and have a big accident. But we're through Stonewall Corner now, getting it down to third gear, get the nose in and straighten it up, coming down towards uh, Understeer Corner. And again, it's just so good to drive it really is we don't quite get the apex there and it wasn't the best corner but we make it through um and down towards ice cream cove now take a bit of curbing on the inside don't take too much though because it can invalidate the run and then we're down towards here again just getting it down to the third i had been doing it in second a couple of times but it just while you can do it in second it feels fine in second you can still do it in third and maybe take that little bit of extra speed just a couple of extra miles an hour through there uh, but getting it down to second now as we head down towards what will be the slowest corner on the course. Uh, James May Corner, named after Captain Slow. Down into first gear, the only first gear corner on this course. And off we go again. Uh, again, a little bit of wheel speed. You'd have to be a little bit tentative on the throttle. But otherwise, there's no real drama. And off we go down towards the end of the first sector. And it is a very, very good first sector. I'm not going to give anybody any, any clues, but uh, it was a very, very good and very competitive first sector. But uh, coming through Silver Spoon Village now. Again, um, sometimes getting on the DRS a little bit, but you just got to pretty much just keep off of it for this one purely because of the nature of the uh, the course and the turns. Even though they are very sweeping corners, you need all the downforce you can get to take as much speed as possible. And we're going to dip it down to fourth gear as we come through Fraggle Rock Quarter, get back on the power again nice and early. And on that DRS, as we head now through this uh, long uh, right-hander down towards Bridge Corner and uh, 
about halfway through you want to get off the DRS there at those little uh, arrows you get on the brakes down to third gear get the nose in nice and early and back on the power and the DRS as we head up the hill towards the entrance of the Monga McRae Hill Complex and uh, congratulations to Billy Monga actually he won in the uh, uh, the, the Euro Formula Series in, in Po um, yesterday so very very good results to him I actually just watched it before I started recording this it was a bloody brilliant drive it was very very good strategy call at the start there uh, but we move on uh, down towards this, uh, the, these very, you know, abrupt sort of second and third gear corners. Uh, again, there's some dips there. We had to be a little bit tentative on the throttle. Again, you can get caught out with this. While it is very, very planted, if you if you try and push it a bit too hard, you can spin up those rears, and that'll be it. And, and also, it's very, very good over the bumps and jumps. I would expect it to be a lot worse, but it just, it's, you get certain cars where they'll either pitch forwards or they'll pitch backwards, but this thing just fly straight and true absolutely brilliant car uh, over the bumps there we get on the drs a bit early you see we had a little bit of a moment there almost got spat wide and into the barriers and we get off the drs just to make sure we don't invalidate the run and again get the nose in get that inside wheel on that grass to help you pull you around pull around the corner and off we go again and again you've got to be a little bit tentative through here because you get a little bit of air it's easy to end up in that wall and i did on a couple of the runs i had uh, but we make it through and down towards the tunnel and the uh, the great ocean highway now again getting on the drs a little bit we're gonna have to get off it here to get through this fast uh, right left hander and down towards the end of sector number two now and again very very competitive we come down again get the uh, get the nose in nice and early uh, the, the, the track will help you there there's a nice amount of camber once you get over that slight hump and off we go again once more on the drs we're going to get off it here get the nose in nice and early i didn't try it without the with the drs through there even though they are very quick corners and they're not really they're not really making you really put a lot of rock into it i didn't want to take the risk so uh, there we go but uh, again through here very very smooth very planted it was just again like a lot of cars it came alive through here this back end this final sector through sweeps and uh, these you know these lovely sort of bank cambered turns and uh, it was just an absolute dream to drive through here when you get it right it feels very very good and into fourth and down to third again for this one you have got to be a little bit careful i did have a couple of runs that were ruined by just getting maybe a little bit too um little, get turning in a little bit too early and clipping barriers and that pretty much ended runs and and cost us time but uh through here and we run a little bit wide there but we're going to try and get it back around keep it out of that wall on the left hand side and through here uh, on the uh, the rocky road down towards the back end of the course and again absolutely planted through here no hint of a lift at all and we're going to come down to the final corner get it down to the third gear get the nose in nice and early back on the power and back on that drs down towards the line and it's going to be a time of five minutes 54.901 so it has gone immensely close to the Dallara IndyCar. It is so, so close. It's seven tenths of a second slower. And honestly, I, when I started this, I was thinking if I could get it under six minutes, I'd be happy. I, you know, like a 5.59 or a 5.58 maybe, maybe a 57 even. I wasn't expecting it to get a 54 and to go that close to the uh, Dallara IndyCar. Um, so that was an absolutely spectacular time. And like I said, this car, it's, it's very, very good to drive. It is so planted. It is just absolutely brilliant it turns in it doesn't get oversteer it doesn't get understeer the braking is very good as well i don't think i had one single locked brake throughout that entire run so it's a superb car to drive it really is and uh, uh while it doesn't get a time on the actual leaderboards uh as you can see here if it did it would have been in 13th place i've got highlighted 14th for some reason but i would have got uh, 13th place there right behind my dalara indycar time uh but it does get a place on our hill climb monsters leaderboard and it goes third so yeah very very close there um i think with a bit more time and maybe just some very very fine tuning i could get it below a 54 uh we did have that little moment as we came out of the second mirage corner got on the drs a little bit early on the towards the pogo stick straight and almost pitches into a barrier so i had to get out of it again but um there we go um so yeah absolutely brilliant car to drive guys if you haven't tried it yet i highly suggest you do because it is a very very good car to drive and uh uh, like I said, I really enjoyed the series I raced in. Sadly, it didn't reach fruition, even though I did win the last race, sort of by default, because everybody else got kicked out of the lobby. But a win's a win. A win by default is still a win. So there we go. So yeah, uh, Formula Renault 3.5 goes third on our all-time Hill Climb Monsters leaderboards, just behind the Dallara IndyCar. Wasn't really going to challenge the Toyota, but 
something will in the future i'm sure but uh yeah so that's pretty much the end of today's episode guys so uh thank you everybody so much for watching uh, if you enjoyed this you want to see more sim racing content from myself make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and when you do make sure you hit that bell notification button so you get a uh, little email or an update uh when all my videos go live there will be one nice and early tomorrow because we have the final um season one dlc release uh which is germany for dirt rally 2.0 i'm really looking forward to that and i will be getting on that one nice and early as well so uh, if you're into your dirt rally and you want to see that dlc make sure you subscribe because that video will be up nice and early tomorrow morning uh but yeah once again guys um thank you everybody so much for watching stay cool and as always i will catch you in the next video peace